Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video. Yes, welcome to our channel. You know, this type of walking and touching video addresses one of the most fascinating questions raised by our dedicated viewers, sus subscribers and Patreon members. Yes, it's one of the questions that, the, that they have been asking for months and they, you know, they, it just keep rolling in and we just have to address it. So many, you know, many wonder why individuals from Europe and North America significantly influence our country's affairs despite our lack of sheer history or commonality. Yeah, because, you know, our history is totally different from these people who are meddling in our country's affairs because it's not like these people are our friends or they like us or love us. They never. You understand? Only a fool would believe that somebody who have kidnapped them, enslaved them, torture, rape, murder, rob, steal everything from them and believe that these people is going to love them. Only a fool would believe that. Stockholm Syndrome. But we as black people, a lot of us have Stockholm Syndrome. And we believe that because somebody smile with us and say all the nice words them mean that they mean us well. And to date we haven't seen where these same people the enslavers and their, you know, their offsprings, if they have done anything to make our, our lives as black people better. Just look at their country, where um, black people live. Black people is at the bottom. As black people is always at the bottom, at every social structure um, in, in this world. So it is crucial to reflect upon the fact that it was their ancestors and relatives who enslaved our forefathers for numerous centuries, display no love or compassion towards our people. We have endured unimaginable atrocities, including rape, murder, terrorism, and both economic and physical oppression. Yes, sadly, even today, today, January 10th, yes, Today, January 10th, the descendants of those same oppressors make decisions about our governance and strive to mold us into their distorted mindset. The individuals responsible for the historical wrongdoings against our people are the ones who continue to inflict economic terrorism upon us. They exploit our criminals to destroy the lives of our fellow citizens further solely because their color is black black look around can you find even a, a european country succumbing to their dictation and governance it is time to at attain autonomy and reclaim control over our lives as a people we are not in charge of our lives it's white people still in charge of us see they have amish campbell a man who's from britain Every minute he comes out talking about police by the camera, why don't he go back to England and stay at England and lobby that the English do not, the British do not deport our violent Jamaicans who are over there, that these people have cudgeled, nurtured, and give them support over there to be criminals. And then they want to send them back to Jamaica to un unleash their, their trade that they have learned over there. We must eradicate external influence within our country. And even on the beautiful island of Jamaica. We have enough of these meddlers, man. Enough of them. We must be left alone to rejuvenate our nation and eliminate the presence of these people. Therefore, we kindly ask 
are kind of requests Mr. and Mrs. White people to take these individuals into their own countries as we strive to create a better future for ourselves. Yeah, so we are asking you, Mr. and Mrs. White, white, white people. Yeah, we are asking if we take all away, we jewel on them. We Andre Blackman Bryan. We Tessa Millers. We Zeke's. We Christopher Dudos. All of the murderers them and, and all of the people them I want to come. Take them in a year country. So that the people in Jamaica who want to live in a harmony. Where their rights are respected. Stay by themselves. We don't want to. Since as you people are lobbying for these people. Talking about their rights and not victims right. Why don't you people take them into your country. And let us move on with our life where we can live in harmony as a people. Thank you for immensely, immensely for your undivided attention and active participation in our journey towards reclaiming our autonomy. Together, let us break free from outside influence and restore the dignity and prosperity that our people truly deserve. Stay tuned for more empowering content and join the movement for a positive change. You know in Jamaica foreign in interference in Jamaican crime and masking the truth about Assistant Commissioner Amish Campbell who's at Indicom. Indicom is a criminal cuddling organization, yes, uh, part of the, uh, the Jamaican government in which only, a crimi only criminals in their country would attack their law enforcement and military to give criminals this kind of reign. I know we are at this juncture now. We're we're not even going to touch on this because there's a bloodbath that's coming in, you know. We're going to have a bloodbath in Jamaica. Whether or not you don't want to believe it. And we're talking about politicians, especially from the GLP side. Because all of this has been conspired and planning by the PMP criminal organization. And it starts right here from Warakaril. I haven't posted photographs of the people who are there in Jamaica who are supposed to be carrying out this massacre right there in Jamaica. Yes. And these people there in Warakaril. I don't know what kind of intelligence they have in Jamaica, but apparently it's not working. If Special Branch was still there, you know, at least they, you know, the police would have uh, all of it. But I can tell you that. The intelligence agency that in the police force are not effective as special branch. They are not even a replica of special branch. They are nothing like special branch. And we know that um, the people in the military and a lot of members in the police force, they are totally against this prime minister and the government. Because you know that most people, most Jamaican people, some of them, they, are, they love the corruption and they are the mindset of criminality. So they have been planning. They have been planning feverishly, yes, to dismantle and and create this bloodbath. But most people, when they're thinking about committing crimes, they don't think of after the repercussion. They're just thinking about now. You understand? So as we, you know, as we continue the journey, we can see that, you know, Jamaica is one of the most beautiful, most beautiful island in the world. But its influence of foreign interference in Jamaican crime, you know, the truth about Assistant Commissioner of Police, Assistant Commissioner of Indicom, not Police, Amish Campbell. You know, so the British have sent this man, Amish Campbell, to give our criminals, killers and murderers more edge, powers and encouragement over our police force and it's gone too far. Mr. Campbell has really served in Jamaica, but he should return to England. A recent survey by the Jamaica Young Police Channel showed that a majority of law-abiding Jamaican citizens want him out of the country today. They want Mr. Campbell to go back to England. He's not Jamaican. He doesn't share our commonality. He doesn't share our culture. He doesn't share our accent. He doesn't share anything. The only thing that he shares with us is life. But his life is totally different from most of the people on the island's life because they are black lives and his life is white life. So he doesn't know what it is to be a black man. Mr. Kiambu does not know how it feels as a victim of crime, of these terrorists in Jamaica that he's defending. Unfortunately, there's bad news. 
Mr. Amish Campbell is not going anywhere. So to all of you who have been, you know, asking us why we haven't said anything about it now that you're here. You see, Jamaica may be independent on paper, but in reality, those same people who once enslaved our ancestors are still pulling the strings. So we are not in charge of, of charting our own path and future because the same people the same people whose ancestors enslaved our ancestors, they are still in charge of the country and still in charge of our affairs. Not until, not until we are able to free ourselves from them as other countries like Singapore. Yes, remember you know, when Singapore was cleaning up its country, you know, it was the same British. Remember the Singapore? Singapore was a part of the British Empire. And when they received their freedom from they got um, independence from them. Everything that Singapore was doing, they were totally against it. Because they do not want to see the people that they have colonized to succeed. And if Singapore was listening to these people, the people in Singapore would not be living a first world status at this time. Because it only goes to show you that if someone who have kidnapped you, enslaved you, commit rape, murder, all of the high crimes you can think of. Do you think that person wants to see you succeed? Now that I can't say them, you are free physically, but mentally they don't want you to be free because they want to make sure that they destroy you. So don't think that because these people are, ta are saying all the nice things mean that they are nice. They are not. We need to take charge of our country. So some people are saying that... Um, in a few months, hope Jamaica will become a republic to tell Mr. Cambus, adios, out of here. And see you, not later, but see you no time again. Because this man is behaving as if he's a Jamaican and he's not. Every time you see him keep coming out having press conference about cameras or police, why don't Mr. Campbell go down there in Unspear Police era? Yes, and walk through the community and see what's happened to him. Because he's behaving as if our murderers there are saints. We don't want any camera for our police. We know that the Jamaican people in the ghetto, they are liars. A majority of them and they are anti-police. I am from the ghetto too. These people are narcissistic and their train is something that has been imparted to them. From, from they can start using their senses. But it's us as, as people with people who are seeing not to buy into these people's lies. Our Jamaican police don't need any camera. They just need to send out. They just need to have to authorize to use preemptive strike to send home to all of these criminals. We have enough of them. Our prisons are getting full, and these boys are committing more murders. White people want to see us fail as a nation. Yes, the white woke to visit them. They want to see us fail. They want to see us fail as a nation with criminals running amok among among our people. They want to keep us under their control as puppets in their twisted games. Remember that you know, these people don't know the difference between night and day you know, and up and down. They can dictate our lives in Britain. But here we have no say. It is the so-called woke-tivist who can differentiate, who can't differentiate between up and down, wrong and right. For them, everything is awkward and backward. If it's up, for them it's down. And if it's down for them, it's up. If, we, if it's night, they say it's day. And they want to tell you how to think. They want to tell you that a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man. And if you dare to speak up, then you are labor a bigot. When they are the ones that are trying to impart their madness on us. We don't want these people around us. Enough is enough, man. We're tired of them. The only thing, the only thing that these people have done throughout their time on earth is how to destroy other race of people especially black people yes so the same people from britain who have been undermining our government to appease the criminals are the same british are the same is the same government in britain that have passed laws to make it make it harder for jamaicans to visit the motherland you have to have visa to go there and it's because of Jamaican criminals. But yet still these people, they're in our country looking out for them. Whilst they do not want them in their country, but they want them to wreck our country. So that the best and the brightest can migrate to their country to become their slaves. 
How about let the Jamaican people can um, dictate their own future? We don't need no Amnesty International. We don't need no Amish camp in Jamaica. We need black people to take care of our business. Black Jamaicans. We don't need no white, no, no Amish camp there telling us every minute about police need cameras. Why don't you give the criminals camera? Why don't you go and give the criminals camera? Why don't you put up cameras in the ghettos to see, to witness the murders? Go down there and tell them that you want to put cameras in there and say they don't shut them out. Shoot them out of, of, the, of the light poles because they, they know that they are the chosen one. Every day our police force fight tooth and nail to preserve law and order. But with the interference of foreign powers, their efforts are undermined. The British influence in Jamaica has hampered the progress we strive for. It has deprived us of the safety and security that every citizen deserves. We must reclaim our independence in both spirit and action. Our ancestors fought for our freedom. We must continue that fight today. Let us unite Jamaica and demand the removal of Amish Campbell and other foreign interference that hinder our progress. Yes, you have this woman even from Italy. Came to Jamaica to set up a human rights group in Jamaica. She needs to go back to Italy. Italy is where they need, she needs to work as a human rights group for the black Africans that is coming there that they're treating like garbage. Why? What? Is it human rights is such a big business in Jamaica that even foreigners can come there and set it up? And we cannot go to um, Italy and set up human rights group there. We have enough of these people, man. We need them out of our lives. We must can part, um, take care of our, um, our future and reshape our, um, our country. Together we can reshape our nation free from injustice. We can build a society where law and order prevail and where our people can thrive. Thanks for watching, man, and we urge you, if this is the first time you, you're tuning into the Jamaica Young Police channel, yeah, man, subscribe to the channel, select all. Yeah, select all, and whenever you select all, whenever we at the Jamaica Young Police channel release a video, you'll be the first to be notified so that you can be able to watch the video. Yes, share the video, share the video with a friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your neighbor, your co-worker. Your grandpa, your grandma, yes, and tell them. Tell them to tell a friend about the Jamaica Young Police and that we are against criminals. We are criminals with a passion. We have zero sympathy for them. We don't serve sympathy juice, sympathy coffee, sympathy tea, or sympathy food over here. Everything. Now we have no compassion for them either because these are people that we do not want around us. Let the people in North America and Europe welcome them and let us see how they would entertain them and allow them to continue to live amongst them because these people have no respect for human rights or the rights of other people or their property. Let us shed light on this injustice called by British influence in Jamaica. Let our voices be heard. So greetings fellow Jamaicans. Yes, as we stated before, Remember to give the video a thumbs up. Yeah, give the video a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up on the video that means you're a criminal supporter. And you know, we at the Jamaica Young Police, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. One thing with we, we don't break the law. Everything that we have done over here is within the ambit of the law. We don't break laws, period. Because we are a group of law-abiding citizens. So we want you, so today we shed light on the issue concerning many of you. Yeah man, meet Amish Campbell, the assistant commissioner at Indicom, who happened to be British. However, not his nationality worries us, but his troubling actions. He's not like a Mark Shields. Mark Shields, Mark Shields is there, and Mark Shields realize and know that he has a daughter, you know, Mark Shields know that his beautiful daughter, he knows that the same people that Amish Campbell is there rooting for if these people get a chance to put their hands on his data. Mark Shields wouldn't even be talking about human rights or anything like that because he know that these people are heartless, depraved mind and have no respect for, for, the, for the rights of other human beings. Mr. Campbell have no experience or can, can empathize or sympathize with people who are victims of crimes in Jamaica. Our police don't need any, any cameras. All our police needs 
is this have the same rights as when I joined, when Edward Siaga was Prime Minister in Jamaica, where the Jamaican police weren't forced to give statement. The statement was a voluntary thing. If the police doesn't give a statement and you want to arrest her, you charge him. But you're not supposed to be forcing police to turn witness against their colleagues. We're only in Jamaica, the criminal's paradise. I have never seen any other race of people in black people's business and black people's lives are better. Never! It's time now for these people to treat us as equals. They are not superior to us. Not because they stole everything that they have. And we don't have to stoop down to their levels to become dishonest and ignore our conscience. And that is where we see that our country is going in. And we just want back our country because these people, they are inbuilt and destroying us as a people from within. So we have received numerous requests from our viewers, subscribers and members of the Patreon squad. All asking the same question. Why is a foreigner involved in our daily lives? Why is someone who is not Jamaican interfering in our business, especially when it comes to crime? And we go right back to say that it has to do with Britain. Jamaica is trying now to, to unchain itself from the British Empire. But without, but without unchaining ourselves from them, the only thing that we need to take with us is the United Kingdom Privy Council. If we abandon that, we're going to be full-fledged banana republic. Yes, I always say that because the only thing, only thing that we can bank on on the black people in the Caribbean is that they are corrupt. Criminal-minded. Pirates and buccaneer thinking. Yes, we know that the white people, that, that we know that the people who went slave our ancestors, they are not much better. And we're not going to deny it. Deny it. The Jamaican people have a deep-rooted desire to handle their affairs. They do not want foreigners mending in, in our internal matters, particular crime. Remember a time when the only white government that generally supported us was the United States government under Ronald Reagan. I always say that we say that without any apologies. Yes, when Ronald Reagan was president, Jamaica received one of the best support from the American government since independence. But because of the PMP and their criminal ways, yes, they had asked the Americans to leave so that they can ramp up their criminality. And you know the most corruption and the most criminal acts by any government in the history of Jamaica occurred from 1989 until 2007. 18 years of criminality by a government. The, Ronald, the United States government and Ronald Reagan was the best support that the Jamaican government had ever received. The US government provided crucial training and funding to our police force and military, leaving no rooms for criminals or defenders of criminality. They fought alongside, alongside us to reduce and combat crime in our beloved country, Jamaica. Yes, and I have seen them when I was at the Jamaica Police Academy. The last set of commanders that train our um, members of special operation when Edward Siago was Prime Minister, they even used helicopters, Black Hawk helicopters, at the Jamaica Police Academy where they land these helicopters on the play field at JPA. Yes, and you will see, it. you know, these police officers that used to work at special operation base, they call it eradication. That is the same division that was eradicating Jamaican criminals and that's the same division that PGA Patterson scrapped because these people, they love criminals. But sadly, the same cannot be said about Mr. Campbell and the British government. Yeah, man, his presence raises concern among the Jamaican people. It is no secret that resources given to the criminals have only destroyed our fellow citizens lives and we all know that that england mr campbell's home operates differently so we at the jamaica young police channel and all of you we are saying enough is enough man we demand transparency and accountability within our ranks we call for 
ending foreign interference, especially in the fight against crime. It is time for the Jamaican people to control their destiny. Mr. Amish Campbell, the assistant commissioner at Indicom, who is, who is British, is an enemy of the Jamaican people and a friend of the Jamaican killers. Let me repeat myself. Mr. Amish Campbell, the assistant commissioner at Indicom, who is British, is an enemy of the Jamaican people and a friend of the Jamaican killers. A majority of our viewers, subscribers and members of the Patreon squad have only requested that, that they had kept asking, saying, why is a foreigner involved in our daily life? Who is not Jamaican and do not want any, and they do not want any foreigner in our business, especially crime? Because the only white people government they have ever seen helping Jamaican government reduce crime was the United States government of Ronald Reagan when he provided the police force with all kinds of training, funding, and not a single penny for criminals or a defender of criminality in Jamaica. Giving various resources to criminals and encourage them to destroy the lives of their fellow citizens. Since, and England, where Mr. Campbell is from, is different. The Black Islands, Thrive, thriving under British go governance while examining the impact of culture and independence. The Black Islands thriving under the British governance while examining the impact of culture and independence. They start provoking discussion and explore the fascinating dynamics between the British Empire and these islands. We delve into how their unique culture, norms and socialization have contributed to their exceptional success, particularly in comparison to independent highlands such as Jamaica. So we have seen all of these countries that are still under British rule, they are doing exceptionally well except Jamaica. Because the Jamaican black man has destroyed its own people all in the name of corruption and the name of getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer. The people living on these black islands have established a society where the paramount values include respect for the lives of their fellow British citizens. And in Jamaica, it's the opposite. And they have three leaders who are from Britain, like Amish Campbell that's in Jamaica. We just need Mr. Amish Campbell to go back. He has been um, Deputy Commissioner of Indicom. What is his job there? What, to look, up, look out for criminals? Hey, if you want to look out for criminals, just go back to England. We have, a, we have many Jamaican criminals there. Just let them stay there. Don't let them deport them. So they are subject, of, subject to the governance and influence of the British Empire, which has undoubtedly played a significant role in their prosperity. Jamaica is not enjoying any prosperity because the prosperity has been taken away from the Jamaican people. Wrecked. Over 40 something, uh, over 40 something year, years ago. From economic investment to mental and spiritual go growth. These islands have thrived under the guidance of the British. So all of these islands, the Cayman Island, Bermuda and all of the other islands. Eh, these islands they are booming because their money is the same money as the British pound. While we in Jamaica, we have the Jamaican dollar that has no value. Because we had, we had a government that was in power for 18 years. And for the 18 years, it was negative growth. And if you multiply, well, don't talk about multiplication or addition of negative and, bec and become positive. Yeah, that number doesn't work here. If you have negative growth last year and negative growth this year, it multiply them, don't make it become positive. Because there's no multiplication. Only thing you can do is a comparison. So meanwhile, we shed light on the state of independence, focusing on Jamaica as an example. Regrettably, it has been plagued by rampant criminal activities, making it a notorious criminal's paradise within the Caribbean Sea. As a result, the mental, spiritual and overall well-being of its people have suffered greatly. It is important to note that other islands in the region do not willingly accept individuals from this toxic culture of criminality called Jamaica. Yes, in yeah, the other Caribbean islands, they don't want our people around them. 
and rightfully so. It's not the people's fault, it's the leader's fault because we have been misleaders, misleading the people for years. And that's why when the people them visit other, other, other islands in the Caribbean, they can't assimilate. So they end up in problems and being deported. So they rightfully prioritize the well-being and self-preservation of their communities. It is not a case of discrimination, but rather a necessary step to shield themselves from negative influence emanating from a crime-ridden criminal's paradise called Jamaica. So journey as we explore the fascinating contrast between thriving black islands and a British governance and the impact of culture and independence on these communities. Gain a deeper understanding of the intricate societal dynamics in this thought-provoking discussion. The history of foreign intervention in another country's internal affairs mainly related to crime and injustice is complex and requires careful consideration. So here are some points. You know, sovereign and international law. Every independent, every independent nation has its right to self-determination and to handle internal affairs without external interference. They are just saying that on paper in a United Nation, but in principle that doesn't work like that. Is the white people behave as their master of this, this world and the universe? Only like the people like the Chinese and Singapore and those countries that they cannot dictate things so and tell them how to run their affairs because the white people want to behave like they are gods and they are not. So this principle enshrined in international law including the United Nations Charter. However, there are exceptions to this rule such a situation involving human rights violation or threat to international peace and security. Look what is happening right now in Russia. Russia has committed so many um, heinous crimes and we have seen Vladimir Putin traveling all over the world and to date no one arrested him. Context and impact. It is crucial to understand the specific context of the situation. Are the foreign countries genuinely concerned about human rights or do political economic motives drive them? Hmm. What is the impact of their intervention on the country's sovereignty? and ability to address its crime problem effectively. Potential benefits and risk. Foreign assistance can help address complex issues like crime and justice. For example, international organizations can offer expertise, training and resources to support local law enforcement and judicial systems. However, such assistance should always be provided with respect for the country's sovereignty and according to its laws and priority. Importance of dialogue and cooperation. Open com communication and cooperation between all parties are essential for finding practical and respectful solutions to national sovereignty. This includes dialogue between the govern government of the affected country, foreign actors and civil society organizations. Avoiding oversimplification. The issue of foreign in intervention in crime and justice is really black and white. There are often nuances and complexities that need to be considered. Avoiding simplistic generalizations and engaging in constructive dialogue based on facts and evidence is essential. By carefully considering these points, we can approach this complex issue with greater understanding and awareness of the potential benefits and risk involved. Promoting dialogue, respecting sovereignty, and ensuring intervention genuinely benefits the affected country remain critical. In any discussion of foreign involvement in internal affairs, it is also important to remember that individuals, regardless of their nationality or background, deserve to be treated with dignity and respect within legal framework of the country they are in. This applies to both citizens and individuals accused of crimes. Ultimately, finding solutions to crime and justice issues require a collaborative effort that respects national sovereignty, uphold human rights, and prioritize the well being of all individuals in, involved. So now the British have sent this man, Amish Campbell, 
to give Jamaican killers and criminals, murderers, more edge powers and encouragement over the police force and have gone too far. Mr. Campbell has done more than his time in Jamaica and should go back to England. Yeah, go on back to England, we don't want you down here. Because you're not looking out for we. All you look out for a criminal, every time I talk about camera, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that, you know, a, a condemn or a criminal them. When you see all the murder the children, then we, you don't say anything. But as police shoot, you have to talk about, boy, police um, kill. Hey, look here, man. If Jamaica have the law them as American, as the American police have, we can easily have 10,000 murder, um, 10,000 fatal shooting every year because Jamaicans as black people are the most violent people in the world because we are the murder capital for, uh, for the world. So Jamaican, don't need, uh, Jamaican police, if Jamaican police has half, half of the powers as the Americans have, we can have at least 5,000 fatal shooting every day killing Jamaican criminals. And we have more criminal than that at Jamaica. How do you mean? And that's what we just say. We have more. We, we, a easy 5,000 people who could have killed every year. Because the people them in discipline. Every time you attack a police, you could have killed them. But I have bad news. Amish Campbell is not going anywhere. The reason is that Jamaica is independent on paper. But in reality, the same people who have enslaved our ancestors want to see us as a people who feel as a people who feel and criminals run amok among the people and they in Britain can, can can stay there and dictate our life and we have no say because of these woke activists who cannot differentiate between up and down as everything is awkward and backward and them and for their brains. So Jamaica struggle, the paradox of paper dependency and modern day exploitation. So we delve deep into the paradoxal reality of Jamaica's struggle. The paradox of paper dependency and modern day exploitation, we uncover the islands and go and battle with paper dependency and the relentless exploitation it experienced in the international arena. So Jamaica, although them say Jamaica is independent, we are not independent in a way, we are still dependent on them. Because they did not they did not, you know, like give us unlimited amount of resources. Remember, money is only of this world, you know, and they are the one that started the money system. So you're going to ask the question, how oh, is that country richer? Yeah, so you know, so despite being a nation heavily reliant, reliant on paper, Jamaica finds itself treated as a vulnerable entity, reminiscent of a child by those whose ancestors once enslaved its forefathers. These very same individuals of their descendants are still determined to dismantle the nation and its people. And the enduring cycle of dependency, tracing it back to historical roots, intertwined with enslavement. Yet, even as Jamaica works towards a financial independence, it continues to face exploitation that keeps it trapped within a perpetuating system of inequality. So, this is it now. Uh, some people ask, uh, so, we, so how are all of these white countries rich? Because they are the ones that create the money system. They, when we say create it, you know, remember it started in Africa. With the travelers check, yeah. Those of you who know history or you know have a little um, knowledge about history, about trading, the travelers check started by our ancestors. You know, the must say the Arabs and them thing there. There was no Arabs, a black people. Afri Africa, all of the Arabs that you see in Africa now, they are imposters, they are not Africans. Yeah, they are imposters. These are people who have their ancestors have killed our ancestors and captured our land. Because we as black people, we are very, very loving and forgiving. And that is one of the things that's killing us as a people. Yes, that. Very loving and forgiving people have oppressed and done all kind of wickedness to us. And it's time for us to take a stack of ourselves and start to look within. Yet, even as Jamaica worked towards financial independence, it continued to face exploitation. It keep it trapped within the perpetuating system of inequality. Through insightful analysis and captivating visual, we uncover the detrimental impact of paper dependency and the ongoing struggle faced by Jamaica. As we explore the complex dynamics that in the Jamaica's progress, pro progress shed light on new perspective and advocate for ch change. Yes, man. You know, you can follow us on 
Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, Unspear, on, um, Jamaica, Unspear or Jamaica Young Police. We have, a, we have a Facebook. It's right there in the description box. So we're, we're going to delve deeper now into the complex issue of British criminals and their impact on Jamaican society. And what's a British criminals? We're talking Jamaicans that have been, you know, living in Britain, been socialized, cultured, nurtured with their criminal criminality that they learn. And then after these people commit themselves there in Britain, that's why I want Mr. Campbell to go back to Britain to make certain that these people are not sent back to Britain. Let them stay there. Because that's where they learn that they, they, um, they trade as criminals. Because they live in first world countries where they know how to commit crimes and all the, and the system is very generous to them. And then they return to Jamaica wicker than ever. Yes. And we know say it's more we are most wicked here, but we just tell you as a Jamaican. Yeah, so some people understand and the man down by 30 trillion say, yeah man, I mean a wicked boy that and all them things. Yeah, we just so we have to learn to resonate with the people them. So every week it is disheartening to witness the presence of a foreigner who does not identify with our culture or accent or comprehend the actual depth of the poverty that some of our criminals possess. The, consequen the consequences of their actions ripple through our communities, leaving devastating devastation in their wake. Britain, in its effort to maintain sanctity and safety for its law-abiding citizens, has taken measures to deport these individuals back to Jamaica. But, yeah, then, Mr. Mr. Campbell, I, that's why I want to go back to England to make them not send them back. Because why would you send them back? When you, them, England now, send them to Jamaica now to look out for these people. You're supposed to be in England look out for them that they don't send them back. But you are here in Jamaica looking out for these um, terrorists. But in England you want them to send them back to Jamaica. No man, that a, that's, that's conflict. That's a, that a conflict of interest. You're supposed to be looking out for the criminals them in England, not Jamaica. Because we want to get rid of them and we want to keep them. Because remember, you, know, you people, it's the British that enslave our ancestors, you know. And now have not, want nothing to do with us. However, there seems to be a systematic flaw allowing them to continue their lives of crime until their inevitable demise at the hands of their rivals or the security forces. So this begs the question, do these criminals believe they possess more rights to life than our law-abiding citizens? Thanks to the misguided, liberal, misguided ideology of the so-called liberals. Li you know, liberalism is a mental disorder, you know. And you know the people them at the Jamaica University, the West Indies of the uh, University of the West Indies, which is a ghetto, ghetto university. Everything is backwards there. And they are the ones that help to destroy the minds of the people. Jamaica faces a critical decision. It is time for us to reclaim our country from foreign meddling and interference. We urgently need to regain control and assert the autonomy our ancestors fought so bravely for. Our nation cannot thrive while burdened with the weight of criminal elements that hijack our progress and endanger our citizens. Through opening dialogue, comprehensive policies and proactive measures, we must work towards eradicating the influence of these foreign criminals and restoring peace within our borders. We call upon the Jamaican authorities to play their part in safeguarding our nation and partnering with Britain to address the pressing issues. It's time to send these foreigners back to their country of origin and restore our order to our beloved Jamaica. So here are some alternatives alternative perspective to consider that the that, you know that the activists them them want to say them positive the work activists have mentioned that we should do and it's never work individual accountability focusing on specific actions of individual criminals rather than their national origin origin allows for a more nuanced and just approach root causes Examine the underlying factors contributing to crime, such as poverty, lack of opportunity, and social inequality can lead to more effective long-term solution. And that's one of the biggest problems with the activists, them talking about poverty, my people commit crime, lies. You understand? My grandfather, them be poor, 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 dirt poor. And every, every generation become better. 
And instead of the generation getting get better, the criminals are getting worse. So poverty now have nothing to do with crime. I lie that. If you know so thou shalt not thief, you know, then you're not going to thief because you have a conscience. But these people have none. So there's a cooperation, collaboration between Jamaica and Britain and other relevant stakeholders can create a more effective strategy in, a, in addressing crime and its root causes. Crime and its root causes have nothing to do with poverty. Nothing. It is just people who want to know so they can harm other people and them get a high from it. That's why them kill, maim and hurt people. Because there's nothing else to do with people who say they're bad. And people need to start to shun them because they are not bad. These are mad people. Then we have these people them now. The human rights activists them. Upholding fundamental human rights regardless of nationality is essential for any democratic society. This includes fair trial, human treatment and access to the justice system. So in Jamaica now, you know, we have a socialized justice system. Yeah, from the day the man commit crime, I go home and I take care of him until him, him win the case I'm going to prison. I go home and I take care of him, which is the taxpayers. Even the lawyer. So the criminal, not even lawyer for him have a fine. Him commit crime against the state and the people of Jamaica and the people of Jamaica and the state. Providing him with food, shelter and lawyer. That is backward thinking. All man, I commit crime, I'm supposed to find the money for pay a lawyer. I just saw it go. You understand? So, by adopting a more informal and inclusive approach, we can move forward towards solutions that address the problem of crime effectively and humanely, fostering, fostering tremendous respect and understanding between different communities. Mr. Campbell, yeah, Mr. Amish Campbell, please go back to your country and let us black people solve our crime problem. That our ghetto university graduates of the University of the West Indies listening to liberals and woke activists like you. Why are you sympathetic to criminals and we, who are law abiding citizens, do not want you in our business? Our criminals have too many rights and the victims don't have any. It is your job to take care about the worst of our society in Britain. Yes, not in Jamaica. Why your government in Britain do not keep our criminals and start deporting them? That's why we want you to go back to England, Mr. Mr. Campbell, to defend our criminal. So, so we unveil in the dark agenda, Jamaican independence and the threat of English colonization. So you know, so them colonize us already, our ancestors, everything them, them passed down to us. We, we don't know our name, we don't know we don't know our culture, we don't know our history, we don't know anything. Is what they told us because we are ignorant. Nothing about us we know. Everything go right back to England and Europe. And we are not from Europe. We are people who are from East, from the East, Africa. Some of us mix with, in, um, with the European blood. That doesn't equivalent us. As Europeans, we are still black people. It doesn't matter how, how brown your you is, we're still black. So we delve into the topic and impact of colonization on Jamaica and its aftermath. We acknowledge the historical reality that the colonizers have really prioritized the well-being of the inhabitants uh, once under their rule. Never, when they were even in charge of us before independence, our people were suffering at an alarming rate. Still suffering. And they were quick to hand over Jamaica to the criminals them who claims that they were founding fathers and they destroyed the country. Especially Norman Washington Manley's son Michael Manley. Yes. And that's where we are now. Jamaica is the worst place in the Caribbean based on culture. And we are trying to take it back. While the British send this man down here to Jamaica to continue to destroy the country so the best and the brightest migrate to Europe and in, to England in that cool basin where people just work even you have to pay a tax to watch TV in Britain you understand and they want they want they want Jamaica back for themselves but they don't know how to go about it so they're using the terrorists them there to kill the people 
and then the best and the brightest have to migrate to their country and North America to pay taxes and better and make their country stay dominant while Jamaica keep getting brain drain. The only way to stop all of these brain drain is to reclaim the country. We need people. So the Jamaican people they need to all demonstrate, go up to um, Jamaican for justice and demonstrate against these people, find out where they live. So today we address Mr. Campbell. Question is presence in Jamaica and expressing our concern that his intentions may not align with the best intent interests of black Jamaicans. Yeah, him, him not look out for black Jamaicans. He not look out for criminals. Them. So we aim to highlight the potential negative consequences of further destabilization caused by external influences. We want to reclaim our country and a part of that process include voicing the sentiment that it's time for Mr. Campbell to return to England as his stay has exceeded its welcome. It raises pertinent question, why is Mr. Amish Campbell advocating for Jamaican criminals? Instead, he should redirect, redirect his efforts toward convincing his government, the British government, to take responsibility for them. We aspire for, for Jamaica to be undisturbed and not to fall victim to destructive forces. We shed light on the deep-rooted issues surrounding Jamaican independence and the looming threat of English colonization all over again. Together, let's demand answers and show the future of our beloved Jamaica. Stay within the arms of the Jamaican people. It's time for us to take back Jamaica, man. We want back our country and want it back from these people. Mr. Campbell, you need to go back to England. Stop interfering, our, stop interfering in our affairs. Stop every time police kill, you're giving us data about, um, you know, police kill, the police, the security force killed um, 10 men last week. Hey, look, we don't want to hear anything from you because you're not Jamaican. You just need to go back to Britain. Anytime police kill 10, them are supposed to multiply that by 10 because they're kill, a criminal, they're kill the people. Them. The only justice the people can get at Jamaica is to get rid of criminals. Them. So we don't want it down there, man. We need to go back to England. Go on back to the Queen. Go on back to the King. Because you, like, you don't look like us. 99% of the people in Jamaica don't look like you. And you stand out far. So why are you there to help to continue to destroy our people's mind? And destroy Jamaica to become a more criminal's paradise than it has, has been already. Come now, Mr. Campbell, man. Enough is enough, no, man. You're in Jamaica now for... Almost two decades now. It's time for you to go back home. You don't miss England. We don't want you to live in Jamaica. You're not Mark, Mark Shields. Mark Shields is a celebrity. You're not. Because I can tell you, you know, the same criminal that you're that you fighting for there you know, in, in our country. You know. They don't like for even all you. know. You know I tell you, you know, so they stay. You know, and then you know what God you serve. We just want back our country, man. And we just want white people to come out of our business. Every time them come and uh, behave like so them, we don't know no white people who are like black people. We are talking about the government them. We are not talking about the people them. The citizens them cool because they love the culture and everything. The same citizens them being oppressed by the same white people them. Because at them control the system. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. They don't do anything for them same white counterpart. They still suffer just like how we suffer in our own country. And they suffer even worse though. You understand? We just want back to country, man, and we need Mr. Campbell to go back to England and come out of our business and stop telling us about we need camera for police. We don't need no camera for no police. All we need are more, more murder for God to departure alone. And we don't want to come and go and give us statistics about the police killing. Because we have, hey, look, in the 70s and the 80s and them things, we have a police one detective named Tom Levine. In my 86 and I'm still alive. He's not losing facul for, um, in, in faculty. He still have him brain, still function, function optimally. He no smoke and he no drink. And he no take medication for sleep. And he kill over 160 Jamaican criminals. So if you were there, if, if Tom Lefien was there right now, you would try to send him to prison. We don't want to know there, man. Go on back, go on back to England. And we need to get rid of Indicom. Indicom? Yeah, man. Indicom and Jamaican for justice and all the other human uh, criminal rights group. We need to know our life at Jamaica, man. We need to take it back. And the people, they need to start to demonstrate on these people. We don't want to know there. Yeah, Mikkel Jackson. Yeah, Jamaican people, them. 
you know, we put up, we have put up, we have put up all of these people who support criminals, you know, and ask on the phone or address so we can supply it online and say, look, yeah, so Lisa and her address here, see, um, Donna Scott Matley address here, you can go there anything you want, if you want she, if you want her husband, if you want her son, if you want her, anyone that's there, you can have them, and the guns are in the dresser drawer, all right, and you understand? And you can have them. And the money, the vault number is 2778. And you can go inside that vault in a Miss, Miss Matley um, closet. And you can take any amount of money you want. And if you want both guns, you can take them. I just saw it go. So we let you know who is very sympathetic to the criminals and who are against the law abiding citizens in Jamaica. Have a safe a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.